Pastor. Everybody praise the Lord. My hour has come. My miracle has come. My blessing has come. You will not miss it in Jesus' name. Father, we bless you for this hour. Glorious God, mighty God, loving God, compassionate God. We know you love everyone here. And all those who are connected and listening, we know you love everyone. In your love, you will do good in every life. Salvation for everyone. Healing for everyone. Miracle for everyone. Abundant blessing for everyone. We well, thank you because we know it's done. In Jesus' name we pray. Your amen has brought blessing from heaven for you. God bless you. You can sit down. Tonight we are talking about something simple and special. We are talking basically about faith. And the topic tonight is the transforming faith in the pardoning powerful Christ. Faith. Once you have faith, salvation is sure. Healing is guaranteed. Your deliverance will be immediate. Your victory will be registered from heaven. Your holiness will be practical and evident. And your provision will not be diminished. It will be going on and on and on. Faith. Faith. And there will be heaven at last. Why are you here? Why am I here? For salvation. For healing. For deliverance. For victory. For holiness without which no man shall see the Lord. For provision. And for heaven at last. All by faith. We're looking at Hebrews chapter 11. And I'm reading from verse 28. Through faith he kept the Passover. And the sprinkling of blood. Lest he that destroyed the firstborn should touch them. You see the beginning of that verse 28. Through faith. Look at verse 29. In verse 29, by faith. They pass through the Red Sea. As by dry land, which the Egyptians are saying to do, trying to do, were drowned. You see that verse 29, by faith. Look at verse 30. In verse 30, by faith, the walls of Jericho fell down after they were compassed about seven days. Have you noticed the beginning of verse 30? By faith. Look at verse 31. Verse 31. By faith, the harlot Rahab perished not with them that believed not when she had received the spies with peace. It talks about faith. 
Now in English, this is different uh, from French Lafoy, but you know, just follow the English. Because faith F is freedom through the Passover. Those people were slaves in Egypt. And the death angel was to pass through. How did they become free? They were not slaves anymore. F, freedom through the Passover. A, acceptance of the promises. That's faith. He gives us the promise. We accept the promise. It says it will save us. We accept the promise. That is the faith that saves. I, implementation of his presence. He came, he told those Israelites in Egypt, search your house. Everywhere you see leaven there, remove it and throw it away. Get ready to come out. Get ready, you are moving tonight. The implementation of his presence Make sure that they are faith. T is trust in his power. They knew that with God all things are possible. They had confidence in the possibility we have in God. They had trust in the power of the Lord to save, to heal, to deliver, and to set them free. That's the faith God is looking for. For you to have forgiveness. For you to have salvation. For you to have healing. For you to have deliverance. Trust in his power. H, hearing with personalization. You hear and you personalize it. It's mine. Deliverance, mine. Salvation, mine. Healing, mine. Miracle, mine. It's the personalization of what you hear. That's what brings the salvation and the healing. You know, it's not only for those who are giving testimony. It is for me. Hearing with personalization. Let's look at them one by one. Tonight... Faith will be born inside you. What you hear, you believe. Blessing will follow you home tonight. Joy will follow you home tonight. Have freedom through the Passover. Exodus chapter 12. And I'm reading from verse 11. Exodus 12 verse 11 And thus shall ye eat it with your loins girded Your shoes on your feet And your staff in your hand And ye shall eat it in haste It is the Lord's Passover it is the Lord's Passover. Not Moses Passover. Not Aaron Passover. It is the Lord's Passover. Look at verse 12. In verse 12, for I, the Lord God of heaven, says I will pass through the land of Egypt this night. And will smite all the firstborn in the land of Egypt. 
both man and beast. And he gave all the gods of Egypt. I'll execute judgment. I am the Lord. You know what God is saying? He's passing through Egypt. He's passing through the world. And he says he will smite. Why? Because of the gods, because of the idols of Egypt. Something is very clear. Because he's passing through because of the idols of Egypt. If an Israelite has a small Egyptian god idol, he will not be saved. If an Israelite kept the gods of Egypt in his house at the corner, and he made a shrine bowing down to the idol of Egypt, he will not be saved because God came to judge the gods and the idols of Egypt. As, as we're expecting freedom through the Passover, all the idols of the world were clear out and thrown away. Look at verse 13. Verse 13, and the blood shall be to you for a token. Upon the houses where ye are. Look at this, and when I see the blood, I will pass over you. Somebody shout, Amen. Amen. When I see the blood. My friends here tonight, I need to clear something before you. The people that tell us, they say whatever we do, God does not see, he only sees the blood. You see, whatever sin we keep on committing, whatever lies we keep on telling, whatever attitude, action, of stealing, he said, God does not see, he only sees the blood because he said, When I see the blood, I will pass over you. The people who say that do not read the whole chapter, God said, Search your house. Take every leaven away from your house. He said, if anybody kept the leaven in his house, it will be cut off from the land, from the people of Israel. They had cleared the leaven out. They had removed the sin. They had removed the evil. They turned away. And they didn't have any fellowship. They didn't have any interaction with the leaven. On that ground. In that base, in that uh, in that way. On that basis, the leaven is gone. And the blood of the lamb is applied. Then, because there is no leaven, because they are repented of their sin, and because they are not bringing back any leaven, when I see the blood, I will pass over you. And the, and the plague shall not be upon you to destroy you. When I smite the land of Egypt, uh, let, let's come to First Corinthians chapter five. First Corinthians chapter five. Uh, uh, I want us to start from verse six. In verse six, well, he said, telling us about leaven. It says, "Your glory is not good." If you leave the leaven there and say, "I have the blood, I have the blood," your glory is not good. 
He said, Know ye not that a little leaven leaveneth the whole lamb? I believe in Christ. I believe in his blood. His blood will cover everything. Your glory is not good if you leave the leaven there. Don't you know that a leaven, leaven, an appearance of evil will leaven the whole lamb? You see, in that verse, he mentions leaven. Look at verse 7. In verse 7, porch out, therefore, the old leaven. Before the blood of the Lamb will be efficacious in your life and grant you salvation, porch out, take out, cleanse off, blot out the old leaven. That she may be a new lamb, as ye are unleavened. For even Christ, a Passover, is sacrificed for us. You take up the sin. You turn away from the sin. You turn away from the idols of Egypt. You turn away from what makes God angry. And then the blood of the Lamb will avail for you. For even Christ, our Passover, is sacrificed for us. In verse 6, he mentions leaven. In verse 7, he mentions leaven. Uh, look at verse 8. In verse 8, it tells us, Therefore, let us keep the feast not with the old leaven. You know, there are people that come to a crusade like this. And we talk about Jesus. We talk about our Savior. We talk about our Lord. Jesus, Jesus. Their sins are still there. Their preachers don't tell them about repentance. Taking away every evil and every sin. We need to take that away. It says, therefore, let us keep the feast not what the old leaven. Neither was the leaven of malice and wickedness. Now it tells us what the leaven represents. Malice, hatred, fighting, retaliation. It says take that away. We must take away the leaven before the blood of the Lamb will avail for us. It talks about wickedness. It says the leaven we're talking about is the leaven of wickedness. The leaven of violence. The leaven of being pugnacious. The leaven of being wicked to another person. That you don't love them like yourself. You don't love them like Christ has loved us. He says, take the wickedness away. Wickedness in the night. Those who go around in the night and they're wicked to their neighbors and they steal what belongs to them. He says, take that wickedness away. Wickedness to your neighbor's family. That you mess up their daughters, you mess up their wives. That's wickedness when the husband, when the father hears that, is sorrowful and sad. Why did this man do this wicked thing to my family? He says, take that away. It says we we'll take the leaven of malice and wickedness away, but come now with the unleavened bread of sincerity and truth. That's how we have freedom 
through the Passover. Tonight, freedom comes to you. Forgiveness comes to you through the Passover. Because Christ died for you on the cross of Calvary. So that he will forgive your sin. He will take away your guilt. He will take away your condemnation. You repent. You throw away the leaven. You empty your heart of wickedness and hatred. You empty your life of violence and fighting. You believe on the Lord Jesus Christ. And forgiveness will come. I missed an amen there. And salvation will come. Eh, freedom through the Passover. A acceptance of the promises. And look at the promise of God. He is a faithful God. Faithful. That word faithful. The beginning of that word is faith. How do I have faith in somebody? He is faithful. He cannot deceive me. What he said he will do, he will do. Whatever happens, he will do what he has said, he will do. And God is like that. God is faithful. And I have faith, not in my feeling. I'm feeling tired. God is faithful. I'm feeling kind of, you know, not very happy. God is still faithful. I'm feeling emotionally drained. God is still faithful. Your faith is not how you feel. Your faith is not what other people say. Your faith is based and anchored on the faithfulness of God. That makes you to accept his promises. And look at Acts chapter 27, verse 25. Acts 27, verse 25. Wherefore, sirs, be of good cheer, for I believe God that it shall be, even as it was told me. I believe God that it shall be, even as it was told me. Not how I feel. Not the stormy seas around. Not the boat going up and down. Not me missing breath or losing breath. I believe God that it shall be, even as it was told me. He said, whosoever comes to God, to Christ, he will in no wise reject. I accept. He said, though your sins be as scarlet, he'll make it as white as snow. I accept. He said, whosoever will call upon the name of the Lord will be saved. I accept. He said, come now. Come unto me. All ye that labor and are heavy lady. And he said, I will give you rest. I accept. What's this? Acceptance of the promises. He calls you tonight. In Acts chapter 16. We're looking at verse 30. Acts chapter 16, verse 30. And he brought them out and said, Sirs, what must I do to be saved? 
verse 31 and they said believe on the lord jesus christ that's all and thou shalt be saved and thy house when you accept that you accept his promises that is faith and he cannot fail i in that word faith the implementation of his precept implementation of his precept he gives the promise he gives the precept and he said this do and everything will be all right hebrews chapter 11 verse 30 it says, by faith, the walls of Jericho fell down after they were compassed about seven days. He gave them a spirit. They saw those Jericho walls. They had no axe. They had no bulldozer to bring them down. They had no natural power. They had no technological power. They didn't have any scientific power to bring those walls down. And he gave them a present. He said, walk around once a day. Do that the second day. Until the sixth day. On the seventh day, go around seven times. That the precept he gave them. They didn't reason how will the walls come down. His precept. The implementation of his precept. That is faith. And he went around. He told them on the seventh day, after the seventh rounding up, he says, shout. They didn't question what he said. They accepted what he said. They implemented what he said. Implementation of his precept. That is faith and the walls came down and tonight those walls in your life will come down the wall that technology cannot break down tonight that wall will bring down the wall the wastefulness and the weakness that scientific knowledge cannot bring down tonight that thing that disease will come down look at john chapter 2 verse 5 john chapter 2 verse 5 his mother says unto the servants whatsoever he says unto you do it that's faith implementation of his precept whatever he says to you fill the pot with water take out the cup of water and go and show it and give it to the master of ceremony they didn't question whatsoever he says unto you do it that if the faith is asking for it says come out of your wheelchair whatever it says unto you do it check yourself your miracle has come whatever it says to you do it believe that he will save you and forgive you whatsoever he says unto you do it 
you're free and go out free. You're not looking around and saying, how will I be free whatsoever? He says unto you, do it. Your miracle has come. My miracle has come. Hey, look at you, your trust in his power. You trust in his power. He says, stand up. Your legs are weak. You don't trust in your legs. You trust in his power. Open your eyes and see. The eyes have been bringing water. And when you look around, it appears that the light will even blind, blindfold you more. But it says he has touched you. Look up. You trust in his power. And you have not been able to sit down or stand up. It says, stand up. Uh, you're not thinking, I've never done that for some years now. Your trust in his power. Because it is his power that will lift you up and bring you up. What you are not able to do before, do it now. You're not saying, I cannot do it because I've never done that in five, seven years. The faith that he expects from me, from you, is trust in his power. In Psalm 62, reading from verse 8, trust in him at all times. Ye people, pour out your heart before him. God is a refuge for us. He says, trust him at all times. Tonight, I trust him. Say it for yourself, tonight, I trust him. That mountain will move tonight. That load will be removed tonight. That swelling will vanish away tonight. Trust him at all times. And one of the great times will trust him at the time of the GCK. Trust him at all times. One of the blessed times to trust him is at the evening crusade. He's healing the person by your right. He's healing the person by your left. The time to trust him, the power is flowing right now. Look at verse 11. It says in verse 11, God has spoken once and twice have I heard this that power belongeth unto God power to say power belongeth unto God power to heal power belongeth unto God power to remove every mountain in your life Power belongs unto God. The power to touch your brain. The power to remove all those satanic forces harassing your brain, attacking your brain, afflicting you. Power belongs unto God. Power to knock off the hand of the devil from your life. Technical knockout. Technical knockdown. 
that the devil will, will pick up the race and run from you. That power belongs unto God. What's faith? Trust in his power. Each now, hearing with personalization. Hearing with personalization. You look at yourself. If you were the only one in the world having a particular problem, you personalize the promise of God, God will deliver you. Look at Mark chapter 5. Verse 27. For she had heard of Jesus. Everybody heard. Many people were hearing of Jesus. But she had heard of Jesus. And came in the press behind. And touched his garment. Look at verse 28. And she said, If I, I, I may touch but his clothes, I shall be made whole. She personalized what she had heard. God forgives. I personalize that. God heals. I personalize that. God delivers. I personalize that. Christ cures the incurable. I personalize that. For she said, if I may but touch his clothes, I shall be whole. As your personal lies, what you are hearing tonight. Salvation, personal lies that. I must be saved tonight. I am saved tonight. I am forgiven tonight. I am delivered tonight. It is that personalization of what he had said that brings the miracle of salvation and healing and deliverance unto you. Look at verse 29. In verse 29, and straightway the fountain of her blood was dried up. She made it personal. He didn't look at other people. Uh, look at that man in the world, Chioki. When he rises up, then I will believe God will heal me. No, don't wait for anybody. Your miracle is on the way. Your healing is on the way. Your forgiveness is coming to you right now. The pardon from the Lord that will say, all your sins are forgiven. They are coming to you right now. Straightway, immediately. The fountain of her blood was dried up. And she felt in her body that she was healed of that plague. Look at verse 34. In verse 34, and he Christ said unto her, the woman, Daughter, thy faith has made thee whole. Thy faith, freedom through the Passover. Acceptance of his promises implementation of his precept trust in his power hearing with personalization that's what she did thy faith has made thee whole 
My friend, tonight, your faith has made you whole. Forgiveness has come for you. Salvation has come for you. Healing has come for you. Miracle has come for you. Where are you? Let everyone see your hand. Where are you? Go in peace and be whole of thy plague. Peace in your heart. Pardon in your soul. Performance in your life. It's bowed and eyes closed. It's bowed and eyes closed. You want to personalize it now. He died for you. Jesus shed his blood for you. And when I see the blood, I will pass over you. You turn away from your sin. You take all the leaven away from your heart and your life. And you look to Christ who was slain for you. Immediately, your salvation will arrive in your heart. It's about an eyes closed. Raise up that hand and say, Lord, that's what I want. I want forgiveness. I want salvation. I want the joy of salvation. I want the peace of God in my soul. I want to know that I know without any shadow of doubt that salvation is mine. My name is written in the book of life in heaven. Raise up that hand. The Lord will pardon you now. The Lord will forgive you now. The Lord will grant you the salvation now. If you are raising up your hand, please stand up. Amen. God bless you there. God bless you there. Rise up. You want that salvation? Rise up now. You're turning away from your sin. Rise up now. You want to have the peace of God and the pardon in your life? Rise up now. You want him to write your name in heaven. You want him to set you free by the Passover. You accept his promise. Come, I will not cast you out. You implement his precept to repent and believe the gospel. You trust in his power. And you hear with personalization. You are raising up your hand, you are standing up. Tell the Lord, Lord, I believe. Lord, I accept. Salvation is mine. The Lord has confirmed it. We're praying together now. Heavenly Father, we bless your name. You are a faithful God. We have faith in your faithfulness. All these who have come to you, you give us assurance you will not cast them away. Receive them into your kingdom in Jesus' name. Say good amen. Pardon all their sin. Give them peace in their heart. Let the assurance of salvation come to them right now. Thank you, Lord, for the answer. In Jesus' name we pray. A loud amen. 
I keep, uh, you keep on standing. Uh, the counselors are there now. A coordinating overseer, moderating overseer tonight is coming to lead us at this time. When this one finishes, I will come. Your healing, your miracle is guaranteed by heaven tonight. Amen. Welcome you all into the kingdom of God. Felicitations. The Lord has done great work in your life. Your names are now in the book of life by the grace of God. So keep standing while our counselors attend to you. They give you a form. If you can feel very well, please do it very clearly. If possible, write in capital letters. And uh, all that is required, write it eligibly, legibly, clearly. So that we can uh, locate you and we can uh, relate with you and help you to go on in your newfound faith. If where you live does not have uh, a number, <coughs> please describe somehow how we can locate the place with some landmarks or some popular things around where you live. We know that almost many people have telephones. So please give us your phone number, write it clearly. If you cannot write very well, please, the counselors are there to help you. We love you, God loves you, the man of God loves you. We all at one time or the other made the decision like this. And you, we need to help you so that you will continue in this faith. So that the enemy of your soul will not come and take you away again. So please give us all those details. And if you are following us online, we will also want to get a message from you giving your details. You will see an attachment that you will click on and then you will be able to fill the form and return to us at gck.hq.org slash connect. GCK Org slash connect. So please fill it and uh, send to us. If you're also listening by television or radio, you can send us your details through this telephone number. Uh, on WhatsApp or telephone, SMS. Plus 234 915 Yes, 444-9263. I take it again, plus 234 915-945 Four 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 nine two six three. Please do that, and the Lord will bless you. Every afternoon, as we announce by three p.m., we have uh, 
lunch hour with Jesus here at uh, our back, the back of the altar. And this coming Sunday, 2nd June, Et le qui vient, le 2 juin, we'll be having a banquet, converts banquet, new believers banquet. It's a time we interact with you. The convener will be happy that you are there with us. And it will take place in our various uh, uh, regions, wherever we are coming from. Our leaders that brought you here will be able to tell you where the one nearest to you will be holding. Place as they invite you, as they follow you up, please uh, respond and come for this New Believers Banquet. And I believe God, your blessings will continue. I say your blessings will continue. You don't have any advantage in getting something precious and losing it again. In fact, you will regret, you will feel it was better that you didn't even have it at all at the first instance. You got something that will solve all your problems. And then carelessly you lose it again. Or oh, you just discover that uh, because of negligence you have lost it. Now you are a member of the family of God. Be happy to interact with children of God. When we come to visit you, don't run away. We are not coming for your money or anything. We are coming to help you. And uh, if you continue with the Lord, you will be happy for it. Hallelujah. So please respond to our uh, counselors who are near you there. And in all the centers and all those on the radio, please send the information that we have uh, explained to you. In all the centers where we are holding it, all over the nations, please, this time is very important. Let's get the converse, one here, two there, three there, ten there, twenty there. The Lord loves them, Jesus loves them. Praise the Lord. Our counselors, please, let's test in. And uh, if you have finished in the area of your operation, please wave your flag and let us see. Thank you very much at the far back. Thank you very much at the far back also. Thank you very much for those at the back back. What of in front here and in the middle and on my right. Thank you very much. We are still waiting for those in the middle here and here and there. God bless you. All our converts, remember tomorrow, 3 p.m., converts uh, uh, meeting with the Lord Jesus, lunch hour with Jesus. Come early as you come and we interact with you. Then you will wait for the crusades. You are privileged 
to get this salvation. And you must do everything to preserve it. The devil will not take it away from you. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. And after the miracle prayer also. Be ready to catch your miracle. Soyez prêt à recevoir votre miracle. And those who are watching online, Et ceux qui suivent en ligne, and you receive your miracle, recevez vos miracles. also you can record it, record yourself, record your testimony, and send back to us. Your testimony is very important. Your very important. Because the Bible says, let the redeemed of the Lord say so. Say what the Lord has done for you. Don't let the devil keep you short. Don't let him close your mouth from sharing your testimony. When you share your testimony, you confirm your miracle. Hallelujah. Yes, those in front here, are we through now? In the middle here. Okay, all those that are through, please wave your flag. Wave your flag. Let's see your flag. Wave your flag again wherever you are. Okay, I'm seeing all those hands. Okay, that's good. What about here, 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 here? On my right hand side here, in front, who are those there? Are we through? Est-ce que nous avons fini? Okay. Yes, yes, yes. Thank you very much. Our time has come. You will not miss it tonight. Remember, it takes only one touch. As he passes by, touch him. And you cannot miss your miracle. Once again, we have the privilege to call up the man of God who is loaded to release your miracle. God bless everyone. Amen. You will not miss your miracle tonight. Freedom. Freedom from your sickness. Freedom. Freedom from your infirmity. Acceptance. You accept the gift of healing. It's a gift. We don't pay anything for it. And you implement the present. What he says to you, you do. You trust in his power. He has done it for other people. That power remains the same. He says, I am God, I change not. And what you hear, you personalize. The miracle will arrive. Where are you there? You raise up one hand. You lay the other hand where you have the challenge. Blind eyes will open. The deaf will hear. The dumb will speak. The paralyzed will rise up and walk. Swellings will vanish away from your body. Internal pain will vanish away from your body. Your miracle is coming right now. Father, in Jesus' name. You are the God of all power. We trust in your power. Whatever you tell us to do is because you know the miracle has arrived to get it done. And every promise you give is for everyone personally. Release your miracle upon everyone in Jesus' name. Yeah. 
all that attack and affliction in your brain, mental problem, be healed in Jesus' name. Yeah. Blind eyes open now and begin to see clearly. Deaf and dumb be healed and delivered in Jesus' name. Every swelling in any part of your body come out in Jesus' name. With that hand, with that leg stroke, be healed in Jesus' name. Everything that is dead in your body, your kidney, your liver, everything that has packed up, not working. Let life come in those places in your body right now. Kidney be activated in Jesus' name. Your livers be activated in Jesus' name. That flowing blood, issue of blood, dry up in Jesus' name. Those broken bowls be joined together right now. The paralysis go away in Jesus' name. And everything in your body that is not working right, I pray, oh Lord, that the power to make everything work right will come in your body right now. Miracle. Receive it now. Heal it. Receive it now. Deliverance. Receive it now. Total freedom. Perfect freedom. Receive it now. Everywhere to my right, to my left, front, back, middle, everywhere, miracle for you. Online, everywhere, miracle for you. It is done. For you. It is done. You will see miracle in your life. This night, this night, this night, you have it in Jesus' name. Thank you, Lord. Merci, Thank you, Lord. Merci, There's confirmation in every life. In Jesus' name we pray. Yeah. I got my miracle. You've got your miracle. Now you do what you were not able to do before. He has set you free.